And now come here for your question from the judges. Had Hi, good night. evening. Hi. Um, I love Moby Dick. This is something we know. Thank you, thank you. Um, I would like to find out where you have gotten your inspiration from and where you see yourself going in the future. All right, well, fabulous question, actually. So I have a large history with theater. Uh, grew up in theater, did drama all my life, managed and produced different musicals and whatnot, so I actually stepped from that. I'm actually a dancer, so, I mean, I dance well. So. <laughs> it's casual, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, so I take all my inspiration from theater and from dance, and then with my namesake, I'm an English lit major, so I took that and put that in and applied all three characters into one. And then, on a day-to-day -day basis, I am both, so it just fits. Perfect, you look amazing. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Moby Dick. This will be the last time that you are seeing them until the end of the night. They may come mingle, but we're not going to bring them all back out. Contestant number two, go, go, fetch. beautiful and very conceptual, how often do you make the costumes that you're wearing and how often do you uh, think of the conceptual thoughts and then give them to someone else to create? So up tonight, the three that we saw. Absolutely. So this one was made by my beautiful dress designer, Tyler, I can't pronounce his last name, Jesus Barbie. Uh, <laughs> Husband, okay, I don't know how to say burner, burner, burner. Yeah, that's it. Um, everything else was made by me. Um, the noodle dress was literally, I was high at home. <laughs> what? You don't want to be making fantasy. I was like, I love takeout. <laughs> and then the flower dress, um, I've been actually planning that a routine for like six months. Um, I just heard that song and I was just like, I need to do something with it. And if there's a personal story behind it, go watch Tea Time with Sherman. Um, <laughs> absolutely. And um, so it really just whatever comes to me. Whenever it comes, I just open up and let it in. <laughs> well, you're very creative and conceptual, and you, it was an honor to see you tonight. Thank you guys so much. For sure. Thank you, everyone. Come on. Oh, come on, Ruby Hyman. We'll let the judges get their cast in. Okay. Quickly, quickly. Come on, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby. <laughs> She's lost her tip. Okay, okay. Beat it, queen. And our next queen, Pheromone Kills! Um, knowing that there was a pheromone that was most recently on Drag Race, what made you not change your name? And uh, okay. what made you uh, come up with your name to begin with? How long ago? Um, well, actually, I came up with my name about a year and a half ago. And it was before I even watched the episode. Yeah. But the episode was out, and then I came here. And everyone was like, oh, it's pheromone. And so I was like, I definitely got caught with that, but I thought, I mean, I felt like it was me. Pheromone killed. Sweet and salty and just, you know what I mean? It'll get you when you're nasty. I love that you didn't change it. I think that that shows, you're like, no, this is me. Exactly. That's going to be her. And this is what I do, so I don't need to change myself for anyone. So thank you. I appreciate and that. And no one, no one can even spell it, so I, I yeah. really went into that one. That's perfect. <laughs> we know how to spell kills. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next queen, Electrocute. So 
beautiful. So I do have a question about your wings because they went, they, they're animatronic wings yep. on their own. Yep. Even Courtney Act had to push her wings down on her own. Yeah, they're all uh, electronic. So that was absolutely amazing. Um, can you tell us the story behind that and how you have uh, come to be such an elegant queen, but then also mixed in the comedy uh, that you gave us for the McDonald's number? Okay, so we'll start with the wings. Um, I saw them on Facebook, a girl, Alexis Noriega from uh, uh, Phoenix actually. She uh, she makes them for cosplay and she does like huge feathered ones. They're like three thousand dollars a piece and I couldn't afford them. So I was like, do me fairy wings and I'll do a fairy princess and I just I'm in love with her work so I got them in time, thank God. Yeah. Um, and then oh how I became so elegant and like have a mix of funny in there. Yeah, so um, so there's definitely um, there's two queens from Calgary that I've always really looked up to. One of them actually made this entire gown, stone, everything. And uh, this is how they would dress. And I've looked up to them my entire drag career. And uh, so that's something I definitely inspired me, is um, the way they look, so polished and put together. I do funny when I can, because I can't dance. <laughs> I look like Bambi out there, it's horrible. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, comedy, Trigger. I find something that works for me, and I try and like, be fierce like this, but then incorporate the comedy into it, so it's a bit of both worlds, and uh, hopefully it works. You played your strengths tonight, and I think it was, it was amazing. That's why I wanted to find out like where where you get, those are two different worlds. Yeah. And so to combine them into one, and then show us both sides, is it was a pleasure to see. Thank you very much. Superhero. Thank you. I'm dressing the color I'd like to place tonight. <laughs> oh, nobody wanted platinum or diamond? Oh, I mean, these are all diamonds. Oh, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Gold diamond. There's some platinum under here. I'm gonna pop that out though. I love that. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, your numbers tonight, and I'm gonna go through them because there were so many things. Um, so you have the the first one that we saw with the lights and uh, the boots and the matching headpiece. Um, how did you come up with something that was so out of this world and spacey and new and innovative? I just loved it. Thank you so much, first of all. I, but I'm not a part-time woman. I'm actually a biochemistry student. So I've actually done over a year of work with virology. So I worked specifically with Zika, but that was a team. Nobody here understands me. anything you just said. <laughs> Um, I come from a lot of different backgrounds, so I was trying to bring in the direct science that I have been able to contribute to this world with. Well, thank you. It, it literally was out of this world, and now I understand why. So thank you. You're, you're doing amazing things. I can't wait to see more from you, for sure. Thank you. And you look gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Clap. Clap. <laughs> Our next family man is Sue Carson. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm very hard. Do we go to the same hair? Stop it. Do what does being a drag king mean to you, and how has it changed your life? Oh, 
Um, being a drag king has changed my life for the absolute best way possible. I, um, I started doing drag with the fake mustache drag king troupe, uh, the biggest drag troupe in Western Canada. back in 2014, and um, that was really my first introduction to the queer community. I grew up very sheltered, it's sketchy times. <laughs> but um, I, I found myself in this community full of so much support, so much love, and people who would just embrace you for who you were. Um, I don't have a specific drag parent, but everyone in the community, queens from Calgary, helped me block my eyebrows. And just the, the welcoming and acceptance that being a drag king has brought to me. It's taught me confidence in myself. It's taught me character. It's taught me how to present myself. And if I hadn't found drag when I did, and if I didn't have my drag family backstage and sitting in the front row here, I, um, I wouldn't be able to say that there's a group of people in my life that truly love me and appreciate me for who I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> and now, Cat Marlo Menora. How did you get in? How did you get in? Yeah, what did you get in? Um, some Crisco and a dream. <laughs> Backing off of a question I just asked you, what does being a hyper queen mean to you, and how has that affected your life? Being a hyper queen or drag queen to me is everything. It's it's equality. It's a step forward. It's self assurance. It's self security. It's knowing who I am on stage and off stage as a real woman. You know, we all struggle with things like body issues and self esteem issues. But being a drag queen has done so much for me in my day-to-day -day life as a woman. Like, I'll go braless, I'll walk around without my eyebrows. <laughs> and I want to be the one to help people see those changes, and I want to help women or trans women or trans men or people who don't stereotypically belong in drag to see that confidence in themselves. I want to be the one I would say, well, yeah, he said perfection. We know that, duh. Um, so, I, like I said, I've seen Nikki, I've seen Beyonce, and now this is a, it's not a Kimura look. I know she took it from someone else. I believe so. She took it from me. She took it from you, exactly. Yes. Back to the future. Um, so, I know that you're, you're getting inspiration from a lot of things and a lot of people. If you had to describe your style, what is your drag style? Um, my drag style is coming from where I'm, where I'm from. I grew up in the Philippines and I was surrounded with a bunch of cross-dressers and lady boys. <laughs> and I was just inspired by that and at the same time, I want to keep my masculinity in me. And then I moved to Canada, I found, ab I found out about drag and drag race and then I started drag. And then 
Yes, I am a role model to drag queens back in Calgary, and I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that I created my own house, and I get inspired by them. I'm, I know I'm a polished queen, I know I'm a good drag queen, but I never stop learning, especially from my drag daughters. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, here they are, I guess. <laughs> Destiny's children, everyone. Yes, round of applause! Oh, they're just helping her off stage. Yes. <laughs> wow. Judges, I hope you have made it easy for us. I did, and it all. Everyone got the same score.